Good morning, friends. Thank you for joining me this morning for our morning devotional. Um, this morning, as I'm reading and reflecting on this psalm, I'm struck by how different Christianity is from, um, from kind of the self-help kind of thing where you think positive thoughts or you, you, you just don't say negative things, say positive things, or even for that matter, even uh, the prosperity gospel, the idea that if God loves us, he's going to make sure that we're happy and we're healthy and we're wealthy. Uh, true Christian faith rooted in scripture calls for something altogether different. There's a raw honesty about it, a sense that um, God, uh, God is deeper and bigger than our personal experience. His plan for us is so much more than we could think or hope or... Uh, it's so much more better than that. But at the same time, there's moments of agony and moments of despair and moments of hopelessness in the Christian faith. And the scripture and prayer makes a place for that. And certainly the Psalms do. And so today, as we approach Psalm 13, this is one of those Psalms that makes real room for lament and for despair and for hopelessness. Uh, it's a good Psalm for us to be thinking about, even if we're not going through these dark things right now in the days and the weeks ahead, in the troubles and tribulations that we are expecting just as nations um, oh, in a world where thousands and thousands of people are dying every day. Uh, we will face these moments of despair. So Psalm 13, easy to remember, right? You're going through a hard time, you're feeling like you've got bad luck, where do you go? Psalm 13. Now this isn't the only Psalm of Lament. But this little short one that we're going to look at today has some interesting stuff for us in it. And as always, it's God's Word. So it's good for us to pause and to hear it, meditate on it, and let His Spirit speak to us as we reflect on His Word for us today. So I'm going to invite you to join me as we read this psalm, Psalm 13. You can read it in your own Bible, or just follow along as I read it here. Once again, this is a psalm of David which is, it's just a pleasure to be reading all these psalms of his that he wrote and recognize that these came from a man whose life story we know and we can see and we can uh, know what hard things he went through and we kind of can play, ah, did, this, did he write this when this happened or when this happened? I don't know when he wrote this. But uh, he had quite a few moments in his life where it seems like he could have easily have written this psalm. So let's read this together and um, go from there. Psalm 13, a psalm of David. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. My enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. And that's the fullness of that song. It's short. To the point. He gets to the point right away. David starts in and says, God, where are you? Uh, this might be a long-term thing where he's been feeling alone for a long time, but this, but this seems a little more panic than that, a little more acute. What he's saying here is, God, in this moment, I just feel like I am entirely forgotten. The plans that I had are gone. Maybe he's mourning the loss of loved ones. Maybe he's been chased out of his castle. Maybe he's hiding from Saul. Maybe it's something else entirely that isn't recorded. But what we know is that in this moment, David is despairing. And he brings that to God with this honesty, with this reckless honesty, with this, God, you've forgotten about me. God, where are you? Why am I all alone being surrounded by enemies? God, answer me or my enemies will overcome me or they'll get the credit and uh, you'll get the blame. Now, in verse four, he says, my enemy will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. And then there's this transition in the psalm, 
And it's a different, it's, it's an interesting transition. He goes, but I will trust in your unfailing love. It's the positive term in the psalm. In, psalm. in the midst of the lament, David stops himself. And it's almost an artificial stopping. It's not something natural. It's not like the Lord has spoken to him that we know or that we see. It's not like God has rescued him. It's um, just this sense that, you know what? I need to change what I am saying. I have to change the tune here. And so he turns himself and he says, you know what? Though things may seem bad, though I may seem alone and the Lord doesn't seem like he's answered me, I still will trust in him. I will rejoice in his salvation. It's this sense that it is artificial. It's not a natural feeling. David is changing the way he speaks from his heart to himself. He's saying, I will still trust God, even in this moment there is despair. Reminds me of the book of Habakkuk, where Habakkuk says, um, if everything falls apart, I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember it right now, but uh, Habakkuk says, even if everything falls apart, if the, uh, the flower fades or um, the vines don't give off their fruit, whatever happens, I will still rejoice in the Lord. That's what David's doing here. He is saying, I will choose to trust God in the midst of this despair, and I will sing to the Lord because in the past he has been good to me. Where do we take our thoughts when we're despairing? Do we let our fears and our despair and our uh, frustration overrun us, or at some point do we choose to control those fears, to turn our eyes towards the promises of God, towards times in our past when he has been faithful to us. The Lord is good, David says. I will delight in his salvation. And we can do that too. No matter whether we are in the hospital with COVID-19 or our loved ones are in the hospital with COVID-19, whether we are at death's door for that or one of any other of a million reasons, still in a moment, those moments, we can choose to say, I will delight in the salvation of the Lord. We have a hope that goes past death. A hope that is eternal. And we need to daily make the choice to say that's more valuable than anything else. Well, I hope that Psalm 13 encourages you. If for no other reason than you can say, God, thank you so much that I'm not feeling like David was feeling like that day. But if you are feeling that way, then I pray that the Lord comforts you, that he opens your eyes to see his love and his never-ending kindness, that uh, your brothers and sisters in Christ would reach out and encourage you. And I hope that if you are feeling that kind of despair and aloneness, that you don't try to do it on your own. We are made the church for that reason. Message me. I'd love to pray for you. Um, and uh, above all else as well, know that you can trust in the hope and the power of our King of Kings. Let's pray. Father, we come to you thanking you for your promises. Promises that from day to day may not feel the same to us. Some days we feel like they are certain as stone. Other days they may be fading in the background in the face of the trials that we're facing. But we know that your word is true. And we pray that you would be true. Show us that. We pray for a world around us that is shaken and um, the, the pillars of strength in our world are shaken. Our economies are shaken. Our governments are shaken. Our families are shaken by this pandemic. And we pray, Lord, that in the midst of all that, we would be made certain of your never-failing love. That we would turn to you and that we would proclaim hope in you that all the world may see and know your glory, and that Christians have a hope that goes beyond life, um, beyond uh, just having a good life in this one in this world now. We are pilgrims in a strange land, looking for that day when we will be united with you. Lord, I pray that you would bless and keep each person who's uh, doing this Bible study with me. Protect them, keep them safe, fill them with your spirit, and make them a light on a hill proclaiming the gospel of Christ to a world that is broken. Amen. Friends, I hope that you have a wonderful day.
God bless you. Bye-bye.